10 from UTV Outlaws. Today we're going to clean the air filter, grease the wheel bearings, uh, change the plugs, gap the plugs, and uh, this is uh, the second part of a video. So if you would like to see the first part of this video, which was maintaining, you know, changing your oil, your diff fluids, uh, cleaning and maintaining your clutch, the link will be at the end of this video for the first video. But uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and blow this off and uh, start shaking this air filter apart so we can get it cleaned up. You got two clips at the bottom. They're probably the biggest pain, especially with this uh, charge tube clamp. Get that out of there. We got this airy cover on top of a uh, S and B filter, I think. Yes. Is that right? Yep. And uh, let me uh, gear up a screwdriver. So SMB doesn't make an outerwear that covers their filter, so I had to go to Air Aid. Um, it's a little bit on the tight side, but was able basically, to make it work. Basically, the same shape. That's what I run as Air Aid in mine. And mostly, what we do is sand. So I really wanted the outerwear to keep the filter from getting plugged up. Mostly, what you do is sand. Oh, you put most of your miles in the sand too. Don't, <laughs> don't give me any of that. All right. So this outerwear. It's tight, but yeah. Slider back, pull the clamp. I've had this air filter since they first come out, and I've had really good luck with it. Um, they clean up nice. Um, generally, I'll blow them out every once in a while, but uh, you could also wash these, I believe. Yeah, that's honestly probably the best way to do. You shouldn't be blowing air into it. We do. Um, yeah, I just lower the pressure down and but you know, I'd say you know twice a year probably wash it You know hot soapy water and then just let it sit and soak So I also wash the outerwear at the same time so the PSI on this is turned way down so we don't really damage it I think it's like 50 PSI And you just stay back All right, so we got the pre-filter and filter blown out. I don't think it's dirty enough to uh, need to wash it. Uh, I've seen some nasty ones, but this one is not that bad. Inside the housing looks good. When I first took the filter off before I wiped out uh, the box, inside of the intake looked good. There was nothing in there, so uh, that's a good sign. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this sucker back together. Yeah, you can wash these out too. It says in the directions. Um, but this thing isn't bad enough, so we'll just go ahead and uh, we already blew it out, so we'll go ahead and reassemble everything. We should be good to go there. If I were to wash it, I'd probably bring it out there, um, maybe just use some dishwash soap or whatever they say on their website. Um, spray it inside out with a hose, and then uh, probably let it sit for a couple hours, let it dry out in the sun. Yeah, it'd take a while. Let it drip out, you know, the intake hole. Yeah. All right, so this is the pain part about it all getting all these clips to go where they're supposed to go. And line up like they're supposed to line up. Yeah, we always start with the bottom first because those are the most difficult. I've done this a million times. And it never gotten easier. <laughs> One eternity later. All right, so we got this lined up here. So we went ahead and did the bottom first. That's that's the biggest pain. It's really tricky to do. Um, so everything's locked in here. Oh, we got one more here. Oh, 
that's locked. So that's that. That's all buttoned back up, cleaned out, ready to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, jack this machine up and uh, take a tire off and uh, show you guys how to uh, disassemble your brake so you can get a bearing, bre uh, a bearing greaser in there and uh, show you what's going on there. I'm going to pull this tire. Put limiting straps too. I have got these handy. So. It's for our tow dollies, but it works nice to keep the suspension from drooping. So you go ahead and get a pair of pliers. Side cutters work the best. Take this out, pull your cutter key out. You can take this off. Um, I want to say maybe it's a 24. I'd have to double check. It's been a while. We'll find out for sure. But then you pull your two caliper brackets. I believe they're 14s. Pull those. This will come out of the way, set out of there, and then this just slides right off. And we'll go ahead and show you that. All right, so you bend the bottom out of the way, get as straight as you can. See, it's still too tight here. So sometimes after you tighten it, you get the cotter key in there, it backs off, and the cotter key is doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so you can see it's still at an angle. It's either you get a crescent wrench and you can get this thing to turn the opposite way to unpinch it or you just take a pair of side cutters and a pair of side cutters will pull it out. You normally half the time would replace that anyways. So now we can see the size this is. Perfect. This is a 27. Milwaukee some power and then uh, we got to take out these two back bolts here you got a washer here you want to make sure you, you know you don't lose that's the one where you used to have the couple washers on there and you just do the one big one instead yeah all right so it's 15 get them uh, both loose before you take them out just use a 15 ratchet wrench at the bottom because your radius rod's in the way. It's kind of in the way to use a ratchet wrench up here. So, but the ratchet wrench works good down for there because the radius rod's in the way. So that's off. Slide this up out of the way. Okay, then we got the nut off, and all we do is just slide out. It's still got good grease in there, you know, because we did it last year. And uh, I don't know if I'd mess with trying to get that sand off there. You don't really want that in your bearing, so. Yeah, probably not. Probably just slide the bearing tool in there, and let's uh, grab that. We'll get that going. Okay. All right, so this is the bearing greaser for this model, turbo. So all you do is... Uh, they can push it in, and it's in. You put your grease gun to that. And, uh... About all I'm going to put in there. It's starting to come out around the bearing. We'll call that good, and all you do is pull it back out. So we'll do a time lapse on the other side, and then we'll go ahead and show you guys the front. Yeah, we'll, we'll video the front. And then we'll time lapse the other side to speed things up a little bit. You can see there it's starting to come out. But then all you do is reassembly. Alright, so it's like 80 10 pounds you gotta put on this thing. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that right here. Now you gotta you know, stop and line her up. There she be. So we'll go ahead and put this caliper on the back side and then this will be done.
All right, well this side's all back together other than the tire, caliper bolts, brackets, everything back on. That's grease, that was ready to go, and we're gonna go ahead and put this tire on. And we'll Alright, so we're gonna pull this tire. The front is basically identical to the rear. Same stuff, same size, just different locations. So, your cap key again. Now, you might not have to turn the nut. Get it to loosen up. This one looks loose. Oh, but the rear <clears throat> is really where it gets all the pressure from. So that's you just. Yep, I'm just slid out. Done. Same thing here. It's 27. Okay, and then. Same thing, you're 15. That's probably not nearly as bad as the rear. You're able to get it out with just a ratchet, right? Or the ratchet. Yeah, it's a little bit better. A little easier to get to. But just make sure before you take the one bolt completely out, you have the other one loose so the caliper don't try to you know, flip on you. There's your one. And I mean, this is real time. It literally takes five minutes to do. Maybe a little bit longer now, but I doubt it. It might be a lot harder, you know, your first time doing it, but. And there's your washer you want to save. Set this in here so you don't get your grease dirty. Alright, here's the tool. Lift up a little bit. Wiggle it around. She's in. Here the grease comes. Let's watch the race on the bearing. And there it is. So generally when you first put these together, you're gonna have to put probably 20 pumps in them. Yeah, you gotta put quite a bit up front. And then. And then every time you go in there once a year or whenever you do your maintenance. Just a couple pumps yeah, here Yeah, just and a there. couple and you're good to go. But then you, uh, that's all done there. You take this. That's that. Your washer. And this year machine, I was mentioning earlier, they had the double thin washers on there and I had a couple of them that cracked on me. So this is an upgrade you have to do. I think the 2018s, they went to the one thicker washer anyways. So we'll tighten this up, put the cotter pin back through it, throw the two bolts through the caliper and we'll be done. All right, so up here in the front of the machine, we're gonna go ahead and do the grease points while we're here. So if you look right there, that's your grease point. So we're gonna go ahead and hit those on both sides. Obviously the passenger side, driver side are both the same. So if you wanna go ahead and hit that, Tim. There, hold this. Okay. Yeah, this is just a sway bar. Players doesn't have a whole lot of grease points on this machine. There's three, there's the two on the front sway bar, one on each side, and then your one on your, uh, slip yoke uh, on your the middle of your drive shaft there's one there and the rear sway bar you know gets squeaky and dry after you ride it in trails and wash it so i actually drilled and tapped my uh, sway bar bracket and put a zerk fitting in it to where i just shoot some grease in there a couple times a year and it stays quiet i don't have any problems 
So, so we'll go ahead and show you that here, exactly where he's talking about in just a second. All right, so that's your grease fitting right there. You can see you got to pull this back belly pan, and then you can see right there by the uh, carrier bearing, that's your, uh, your grease point right there. So we'll go ahead and shoot a little grease in there. Might take a couple squirts. There you go. That's that. We'll show you the rear one in a second. All right, guys, so on my four-seater, so after you ride and you get mud and dirt and everything in this rubber bushing right here on your sway, rear sway bar, uh, it starts to squeak. You know, you'll see people grab the top of their cage and you'll hear a squeak. They can't figure out where it's come from. You got to shake the machine and put your hand on this and you'll feel the squeak. And then washing it, you know, also dries it out and makes it squeaky so on and such so what i did is i took this bracket these two bolts off took this bracket out and this rubber out and i just basically put the rubber back in there and set it flat on the workbench and i drilled a hole right through here and through the rubber and through the, the cast bracket and tapped it and put a grease fitting in there to where now all you have to do is pump a shot of grease in there work it around or go ride it and then pump another squirt of grease in there by then the grease is around the whole thing because normally with a grease fitting or a bushing it would normally have a line cut inside the center to where when you pump grease in this area it'll travel around to the other side of whatever it's moving on and in this case we don't have that option so you can either disconnect this on both sides and pump a grease in there and wiggle it up and down and you'll get your grease all the way around it or just pump once, twice in there, go ride it, come back and do it again, and you ain't got to worry about it. I mean, I'm going you can like, grease it at any point at that point. Yeah, I'm going like five, four or five months without even have to getting it before getting any noise out of it. Where with before, I'd go ride once or twice and wash it a couple times, and it was back to squeaking. You know, you're riding around, go squeak, squeak. I don't have that problem anymore. And I'm sure they might even sell an upgraded bracket. I know they sell upgraded brackets, but I don't know if they're greasable. But I thought that was a good idea. You know, you can go... Just drill it out, tap it yourself, and put a little... Yeah, it might... If you don't have the tap, and you don't have the grease fitting, it might cost you, you know, 10 bucks to buy the tap and, and the fitting. You know, fittings are dirt cheap. I have a big assortment of them, so... Um, it's pretty easy and probably something I would do. We don't... This this thing don't really get Yeah, this use. thing only sees the sand, so it doesn't get in there. Yeah, it, but it doesn't matter. As soon as you get any mud or water or anything like that in there, that's when you're going to start having problems with that squeaking, but... That's probably the biggest. So on these things, they have just very little grease fittings on these things. Um, Which, and that's the only spot that I see that probably needed one and didn't get one. Well, my machine with, you know, 2,200 miles now, I can't really say that it's a, you know, a good thing or a bad thing that it don't have grease fittings. Like, yeah, my radius rods, my stock radius rods got play probably 800 miles or 900 miles. I have, actually, I warrantied them out, and they took care of them. And then uh, ended up upgrading them anyways with greasable, heavier duty ones. But most of the other stuff, I mean, like all these rubber bushings in your sway bar. Yeah, leaks, none of them make noise except for that one yeah, spot. Yeah, and they, they're still holding up good, and they're still all good and tight. And I, you know, greasing your wheel bearings, I haven't changed any wheel wheel bearings in, you know, 2,200 miles. There's, you know, maybe you know without grease, it's working just fine. You know, I don't know. I would think grease points would be a good thing, but it, it seems, seems to be, be doing okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, finish up the front end and then we'll move on to the next part of this video. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this tire back on, tighten it down, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull the plugs, show you the plugs, gap the new spark plugs, put them in, and uh, yeah, I we'll think that'll be it for this video. So we're gonna pull these spark plugs out and show you the old ones, get them over here to the bench, compare them to the new ones, we gap them up. You wanna just twist to pull your plug wire. Can't really 
mix them up because the length won't let you. You can always look down in there too, and if you ever see any oil, that'd be your valve cover leaking. So keep an eye on that. Spark plug socket. Okay, we're just gonna use this because it's got a nice rubber in it. This is your uh, factory player's tool. Gaps closed up pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We already regret we got these at one point. Now, are these the colder plugs or no? These are the factory plugs. Okay. So the ones that we're going to be putting in it will be the colder ones. So, and I haven't done plugs in this machine since I've had it. Got 800 miles on it now. It's been a couple years, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw some new plugs in it. Well, they both look good. All right, well there's that. So the right side on these two is obviously the new one. You can see the numbers that, you know, aren't even close to each other. But the new one's supposed to be the colder plug, and that's actually the one that came with my Evo kit. Um, I haven't gotten around to putting them in yet, so we're gonna go ahead and put those in here shortly. All right, so these need to be like 18 thousandths. They're a little bit off. Resting your hand on your bench there. Feels good. So, <clears throat> my hand is above the spark plug and just lightly tapping it, but my finger is holding it from really hard, you know, getting a hard hit. And uh, if you go too far, it can be a pain to get it back, but I like that. Feels good. So, you got both of them regapped? Both ready to go, and that's also what these were at too. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put these in. All right, so the plugs are in; they're gapped, tightened down. And then let's put your first wire back, just because the other wire goes over top of it. Both good and secure. Well, I think we got uh, everything done for these two videos here. So, uh, if you liked what you see, you know, continue to keep watching. Subscribe. Uh, we got big things in the works here. Uh, we did just set up a Patreon. We're still trying to figure that out. Uh, you know, you guys watching and sharing the videos, you know, really helps us be able to put out more videos. Uh, so if you guys are interested, you know, just stick with us and make sure you subscribe and we'll be back with bigger and better things. Another thing too is the first part of this video, I'll go ahead and put the link up at the end of this video. And then if you want to watch the first part where we change all the oils and we do the clutch maintenance, I'll go ahead and put it up right now. Up, show you what we got going here. So, might tell you something. UTV catch cans. So, there isn't a lot of companies out there that offer a catch can out there for a razor. And this is probably the best thing we found so far. It's from UTV. Yeah, we've been looking for a couple years now. 
So with me running a little bit more boost in this machine, I really want, and, and E85, I guess, becomes a problem. I've been really looking here lately. You know, moisture, oil, you know, there's Correct. a lot of things that keep re recycling through your turbo. And if you can catch it before it, you know, runs through there, it's uh, probably better. Yeah, keep from plugging up your intercooler, everything else. 